Uh, good morning, students. I wish that uh, you all are doing well. Uh, you're safe and healthy at your home. Uh, since three months, uh, we have been closed uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, our prime concern is uh, your education. Uh, so uh, we cannot uh, start the school in such kind of uh, crucial conditions. So we have decided to start the online classes uh, for you people uh, so that you could study uh, better uh, at your own uh, and uh, this will uh, be a little bit help for you. Uh, so to begin with uh, our syllabus, uh, let's start with our first lesson from your main book, main English leader, the Flamingo. And the very interesting and funny thing is that uh, your first lesson is the last lesson. Yes, the last lesson. The last lesson is the name of your first chapter from the book Flamingo. Uh, so let us start the last lesson. Dear students, uh, before starting this chapter, I want you to watch a movie. Uh, so watch it carefully and enjoy it. Why aren't you in school, you little imp? Oh, I'm too big to go to school. Besides, I don't know my lesson. Is there more bad news? You'll find out soon enough. Now run along to school. But, Victor... Never mind. Today you better be in school. There, you're late already. Now run. Run. your seat quickly, Francois. We were beginning without you. What's the matter with him today? Come in, Victor. 
I, I thought today you wouldn't mind if I... Others have come before you. My children, this is the last lesson I shall give you. The order has come from Berlin that we are no longer to be French. After today, only German is to be taught in our schools. The German master is on his way here. And when he arrives, I shall leave you. This is the last lesson in our own language. I want you all to be very attentive. The first form will begin with their letters. Ready? Abba. Abba. Let us go to the lesson on participles and infinitives. François. The rule for the participle. When the present participle follows the verb, the verb. To be. To be. When the present participle follows the verb to be, it is like an adjective. You know it. I never could learn that rule myself. It is. It agrees like an adjective. It agrees like an adjective. And... You don't have to go on, Francois. And do not blame yourself. It is we, the older ones, who are really at fault. Every day we have said to ourselves, we have plenty of time, we can do it tomorrow. That was a great trouble with France. She has put off learning her lessons until tomorrow. Lessons far more important than the rule for the participle. And now it's too late. They have taken our country away from us. Madeleine, the German master will soon be here. You wouldn't want him to see you cry. We will not have our lesson in reading today, but you must go on with your reading at home after I'm gone. Because when a people are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to their language, it is as if they had the key to their prison. I shall read to you some words that were written by Victor Hugo. As long as there is a Frenchman alive, these words will live. In times like these, let us not despair. For to despair, is to desert France. The friends of our oppressors tell us that liberty is dead. Why do you cling to hope, they ask. Why, indeed? Have they forgotten that we are Frenchmen? That freedom is our birthright? That life without liberty is living death? 
from within the deep shadows of this present, watch the French people. Their leaders have mouthed the words of surrender, which find no echo in their hearts. They are silent, but each knows what is in the other's thought. On each man engraved the names of all executioners. They lend for the day of reckoning, when truth shall return once more, and freedom renew her cry, calling the people of France to rise and sweep before them all the monuments and all the works of ancient and eternal despotism. मेरी जमी अफसोस नहीं जो तेरे लिए सा दर्द से महफूज रहे तेरी आन सदा चाहे जान मेरी ये रहे न रहे मेरी जमी महबूब मेरी मेरी नस नस में तेरा इश्क बहे फीका न पड़े कभी रंग तेरा जिसमों से निकल के खून कहे गुल बन के मैं खिल जावा इतनी सी है दिल की यार तेरी नदियों में बह जावा तेरे खेतों में लहरावा इतनी सी है दिल की यार सरसों से भरे खलियान मेरे जहाँ झूम के भंगड़ा पा न सका आबाद रहे वो गांव मेरा जहाँ लौट के वापस जा न सका फ्रेंड्स आई होप दैट यू एंजॉय द मूवी दिस मूवी वाज पब्लिश्ड इन 1943 इन यूएसए एंड इट इज बेस्ड ऑन आर शार्ट स्टोरी द लास्ट लेसन written by the alpha's dodich uh, in the story the dodich speaks of uh, the time when franco persian war uh, happened in 1870-71 uh, before that uh, france was the uh, nation that was led by the emperor napoleon iii but by the time napoleon iii Uh, in 1870 uh, when it was attacked by persia uh, which is now german at that time it was uh, consisting germany uh, poland and austria and at that time this was another parallel uh, growing military power along with the france so in this franco persian war in 1970 uh, persia uh, could occupy the could co- conquer uh, some part of france so especially these two districts alsace and lorraine and when it is occupied by persia as a part of the colonial practice the persian people the persian empire they impose their german language 
in the district that they have occupied in France. In France, their language French was got banned. Uh, this language was not allowed to teach in the school. Neither uh, in the medium of French was uh, taught anything. So everything uh, will be taught in German. So the place of French is taken by German. And this is what the Persian has enforced in the district of Alsace and Lorraine. And the writer has highlighted this issue in our story. The movie say, speak the same thing. So uh, let us see once again a brief background about the story. Uh, this story is set in 1871 at the time of Franco-Persian War. And in this war, the Persians have occupied two districts of France, Alsace and Lorraine. And after conquering these two districts, uh, they have banned French language in the school. And they have imposed their own German language in the school. So French would be no teaching medium. French would not be taught in the school. Instead, everything would be taught in German language. Uh, this is the brief background of the story. And at the setting of the place, this story is set in a small village of Alsace district now, which is in the hand, the hand of Persians. And uh, the last lesson of French is going on in the school of this small village. So let us see what happens in the story. Uh, but before starting the chapter, uh, we must understand uh, the three basic concepts uh, on which this chapter is based. This chapter uh, is being written. The first concept is linguistic chauvinism. Just now, as I said, that the conquered districts of France, Alsace and Lorraine The Persians have banned the French language in the school and they have decided to teach their German language to them. Now the idea behind it is that they want these people of Alsace and Lorraine should learn the language of Germany, Persia of that time and the French language should be unlearned or these people should forget the French language. They should adopt German language because now these two districts they are going to be the part of Persian country, Persia or today's German. So this kind of system that shows that the particular language should be adopted by the particular people which is not their native one, which is not their mother tongue one. The rulers, the conquerors, they feel that their language, their culture is superior to other languages. So they enforce and impose their language over the ruled one. Rather they hate and suppress the language and culture of the natives. This is a very common practice of colonialism. Now this colonialism is another concept that we must uh, understand. Uh, you already might have studied in your uh, 
9th and 10th what a colonialism is in colonialism along with the geographical and economical exploitation of the ruled territory the cultural hegemony is manipulated now there is this is the third concept the cultural hegemony we will talk it later but what happens in colonialism particular nation they occupy the geographical area of particular country another country they exploit the people of those geographical people they exploit them economically they exploit them physically and along with that they impose their own culture upon them they want these ruled people should learn their own culture and adopt it so that they could rule it for a long time rule the particular nation for a long time that system is called as cultural hegemony now coming to the third concept the cultural hegemony it's an enforcement of the ruler's culture believing this culture is superior supreme and uh, we could get one of the example that the britishers know uh, most nowadays in you know, most of the countries on the back of the world they follow the western culture we indians too we have adopted uh, large at, at the larger extent the western culture their lifestyle their patterns of food their cloth pattern their principles their beliefs their ways of education in almost all areas we are following them we are following the western culture and this is the very result of colonialism this is the very result of cultural hegemony if we compare our own culture of pre colonial time take an example of science take an example of education our lifestyle our beliefs our principles take any anything any area all our aspects of cultures were pretty good as compared to the westerns but still we are very much influenced by the western culture in fact we could say that we are westernized by all means and now we are we are following the western cultures everywhere in the sphere of life so this could be possible because of cultural hegemony because the western people or we could say the britishers they have enforced their culture upon us through education through language there are lot of other tools lot of other means by which they have enforced or they have instilled their culture their beliefs their principles their living style their cloth pattern their foods their everything upon us and unknowingly we followed it and now it becomes a part of our life we cannot you know undone it mahatma gandhi says that the best weapon to train the society is education and the very rightly these western people have used this weapon through cultural education
now it has been 73 years more than 73 years after independence of our country we are still under the influence of this colonialism and its cultural hegemony colonialism cultural hegemony and linguistic chauvinism they are actually interrelated inter associated linguistic chauvinism is the part of cultural hegemony and cultural hegemony is the part of colonialism so if you can teach your language to others you can teach your culture to others you can force them or you can unknowingly this you can uh, unknowingly this uh, uh, you know uh, you can make them to follow you and you can establish the supremacy your supremacy over them language is one of the best mean one of the very powerful mean to implement this cultural hegemony so the importance of language is highlighted in this story our first lesson from the book flamingo the last lesson is the best example of this linguistic chauvinism how it is enforced by cultural hegemony and by colonialism uh, in the different parts of the country this is an example so let us go towards our chapter and study it uh, we'll go we'll start with the of the text uh, directly uh, we'll skip the introduction about the author later when we complete it uh, we'll talk about author uh, let us go to the text the last lesson i started for school very late that morning and was in the great dread of scolding especially because yam hammer had said that he would question us some participants and i did not know the first word about them for a moment i thought of running away and spending the day out of doors it was so warm so bright the birds were chirping at the edge of woods and in the open field back of the sawmill the persian soldiers were driven it was all much more tempting than the room for participants but i had the strength to resist and hurried off to school this is the first paragraph students uh, you can read it again uh, when you read it uh, you should you could see that uh, this story is a narrated by a small school boy school going boy uh, and he is saying in the beginning that i started for school means he is going to school and while going to the school he is late very late he is saying very late that morning it was morning and he is also additionally saying that he was in great dread of scolding in great dread of scolding the meaning is given before you see in the bracket in the great fear of getting scolded getting scolded getting angry with somebody uh, get angry with uh, somebody means uh, his teacher yam hamel was going to be angry with him uh, he has the fear that he will be get scolded by this teacher yam hamel yam hamel is another character main character of our story the first character is our narrator a school going boy and another character is the teacher yam hamel uh, so our narrator the school going boy is in great fear of getting scolded in great dread of scolding by the teacher because he was going to ask the question on the participles and our narrator he did not know anything about the participles the rules of the participles did not know the first word about them not knowing the first about something means knowing nothing about anything something 
when you know nothing about something you could say that you do not know the first word about it so our this boy the little boy also did not know anything about the rules of the participle uh, on which his teacher m hamel was going to ask the question now for a moment he thought that uh, he should run away from the school and spend the day out of the doors instead of going to the school you know, actually every student feels like this no skipping the classes skipping the school you must be very happy that you are at home and no school isn't it true uh so he this little boy also he was feeling that running and he is giving the reason that and the day was very warm and sunny and bright one so very pleasant day and it was morning as it was morning the birds were chirping at the edge of the woods so it as it is a village um, that around the village the countryside is there woods are there so uh, at the edge of the woods he could uh, you know listen he could hear the chirping of the birds and another more interesting thing that the boys you know like that the drillings of the soldier the persian soldiers are there uh, as they have come there and uh, you know uh, in the beginning we have discussed that the persians have conquered this districts of alsace and lorraine so persian soldiers are there and they are drilling there uh, in the back field of the somme so that was quite interesting for the children so he wanted to see that so the chirping birds the drilling soldiers and the warm and bright and sunny day so such a, a pleasant atmosphere uh, who who doesn't want to spend the, <clears throat> the day outdoor so he also felt, felt the same thing but again he is uh, adding that uh he has strength to resist resist means oppose oppose this temptation temptation attraction attraction of these things attraction of the pleasant atmosphere of the day attraction of the uh, you know drilling soldiers attraction of the birds owls uh, and games and you know plays so uh, he resisted it he opposed it and hurriedly went to the school started to the school now let us uh, read the next para uh, when i passed the town hall there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board for the last two years all our bad news had come from there the lost battles the draft the orders of commanding officer and i thought to myself without stopping what can be the matter now then as i hurried by as fast as i could go the blacksmith watcher uh, who was there with his apprentice uh, reading the bulletin called after me don't go so fast bob you will get to your school in plenty of time so uh, when he was going to the school hurriedly uh, there was a bulletin board at the side of the town hall and there was a huge crowd gathered there bulletin board is actually a notice board uh, that is used in the villages and the cities uh, to issue the notices uh, or give the updates of the wars particularly at the you know, time of the war such kind of bulletin boards are posted uh, in the villages so by which we could come to know the news and updates about the wars uh, orders different kind of orders and notices are posted on these bulletin boards so there was a huge crowd uh, in front of this bulletin board our school boy our boy the little boy he did not know what is there and uh, he was thinking that what could be the news now and before that so many bad news came from this bulletin boards as we already know that you know they have lost the battle the spring people have lost the battle and the persians have occupied these two districts so it was very bad when the last bad the news of the last battles the rafts orders of the you know the armies and the commanding officers so bad news now what is another news what is another bad news he thought 
uh, but he was uh, very you know uh, in hurry to go to the school so hurriedly he was going and there was another character here uh, there is another character one of the blacksmiths watcher his name watcher and uh, there is uh, his apprentice also apprentice is a training a person who you know um, learns uh, by getting the training of uh, by by the master the blacksmith here the master and his student his pupil is apprentice so his apprentice uh, uh, when he saw that this boy was very hurriedly going to the school he said uh, after him loudly don't go so fast bab you will get your school in plenty of time now this apprentice what did he say that he said that you will get to your school in plenty of time what does it suggest we will see what does it suggest in our next trade till then i will finish um, now before finishing our today's lesson uh, let us uh, revise once again what today we have learned uh, that we have learned a brief background and introduction about the our first chapter the last lesson which is set at the time of time to question war and in which the persian have occupied the two districts of france alsace and lorraine and they have banned the french language in the schools and they have imposed their german language on them this is the background uh, this story is set in the small village of alsace district our narrator one of the character he is going to the school and late for that and he is under great fear because he didn't know the, that some assignment is given by the hanami about the rules of participle and he did not prepare it uh, the day was very pleasant he wanted to he didn't want to go to school but somehow he registered this feeling and is going hurriedly to the school and before the bulletin board uh, he saw the crowd and one of the person there the apprentice of blacksmith he said that don't go so fast this is what happened in the story and uh, we have also discussed the three concepts uh, on which this uh, story is based that linguistic chauvinism cultural hegemony and colonialism uh, we have discussed that linguistic chauvinism is a kind of ideology that believes in Uh, uh, you know thinking that our own language is superior and it is it should be imposed on others and uh, we have also seen the concept of uh, cultural hegemony which is the part of colonialism and this in colonialism the practice of the colonialism um, this colonial people the ruled one they want the ruled one to adopt their culture so that they could rule for a long time so here uh, i will finish it and uh, uh, for uh, before finishing uh, let's have the assignment for today take down your assignment which is on your board and tomorrow you are going to by tomorrow you are going to submit it on my google classroom so till then goodbye tomorrow We'll see. Thank you.